Can you see me okay? Ina? Yes, we can. Terrific. Let's see. But if okay. you could speak up a little, we're having trouble hearing you. I will try to speak up loud. Give me one second to look at my agenda. Well, let's go ahead and start. Um, can you still hear me? Yeah? What did I do with you? Where did you go? <clears throat> Give me a second here. I lost you. <clears throat> it's somewhere on my uh, computer here. It's weird because we can still hear you, but your your screen is frozen. I know. It's like I touched something and I, let me, I'm going to dial in again. Let okay. me try that. Okay. Okay, we see you, but we don't hear you. Are you muted? I don't think so. Let me. Okay, let me now we down. hear you, nope. and we see you. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's ready to go. I'm going to call the meeting to order, and I'll ask um, City Clerk to. Um, Talk about, let's call roll first, I guess. Right? Okay. Uh, Member Basua. Here. Member Madrigal. Here. Chair Ramirez. I'm here. Okay. Uh, good We're afternoon. Here. Evening. So the next step would be, I, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to, I did not print out my agenda, so I'm scrambling here. The next item would be, we need to do um, the um, pledge, to, pledge of Allegiance, correct? Yes. All right. Uh, I'd ask everybody to stand wherever you are, and let's. Uh, um, I'll have uh, Councilman Madrigal lead us. Thank you. Uh, please put your right hand over your heart. Uh, ready? Begin. I right. pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of right. the United States of America. Which it stands. Stands. Nation under God. Under God, indivisible, mm -hmm. with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Okay. So, um, um, Madam City Clerk, would you uh, talk about the um, posting of the agenda? Sure. Uh, the agenda for this meeting was posted in the City Hall kiosk on Wednesday, April 8th. Okay. And I'd like to, uh, first order of business is the um, agenda review. Any items to... Uh, remove uh, or change? No. no. I apologize. I'm looking for my actual wording of the agenda because it's usually on my iPad, but I'm that's how I'm uh, communicating. So, so here. next we have um, public comments for items not on the agenda, which there are none. No one's right. requested to speak on that. Then we have the approval of the minutes. Thank for you. the so, March 24th meeting. All right. So I'll ask if my uh, fellow committee members have had a chance to look at the agenda and I look at the minutes and if there are any corrections or uh, changes. Uh, no. Um, approve the minutes without any changes. Thank you. Is there a second to that? Second. Thank you. Shall we do a roll call? Yes, please. Member Basua. Aye. Member Madrigal. Aye. And Chair Ramirez. Aye. Thank okay. you very much. Okay. So um, the next item is a report on, um, let me get it up here, the, uh, from the Cultural and Community Services Department, renaming of the La Colonia Boxing Gym. So I'll ask, um, the, re the recommendation is that the Community Services Committee recommend to the city council that uh, a resolution be adopted renaming the Colonia Boxing Gym to Dr. Manuel Lopez La Colonia Boxing Gym. And Mr. Harrison, do you have the report? Mr. Harrison. Good evening, chair and committee members. It's Janice. 
Yes, it's Janice Saragosa, Recreation Coordinator. Um, tonight, I'll be presenting on the renaming of La Colonia Boxing Gym. Terrific. Okay. So the recommendation before you tonight is that the City Council adopt a resolution renaming the La Colonia Boxing Gym to the La Colonia Boxing Gym, Dr. Manuel Lopez Youth Center. So on this slide here, um, oh, I'm sorry. Let me go back. Oops. My apologies. I'm getting used to this clicker. Oh, I'm missing a slide. Mm -mm. Missing a slide. Okay. Could I ask? Okay, for a right here. So there's a um, an update to the name. So it's actually going to be the La Colonia Boxing Gym, Dr. Manuel Lopez Youth Center. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's reordered. Okay. Okay. So as you know, I'm sure, um, and you are all aware, Dr. Lopez was a public servant throughout his career. And here's just an overview um, of his service. So he was elected to city council in 1978. He became mayor in 1992. He served on council until 2004. Um, he also served on um, a number of boards and has always been an advocate for the youth, especially youth boxing. In 1994, he led an effort to allocate $250,000 to renovate the La Colonia Boxing Gym. And here's a quote from him from the LA Times. He states, there's a lot of people that have been involved in boxing programs in the past, and I think this will show that we are interested in maintaining the boxing tradition in this city. And in 2019, the Lopez family pledged to donate $1,000 towards fixing the roof in the boxing gym. Here we go again. <laughs> Two more slides. <laughs> okay, so and finally, um, here's a process on how we got here. Mr. Herrera requested the name change in late 2019. The Parks, Recreation, and Community Services Commission unanimously recommended the name change. So you're now being asked to recommend the name change to City Council to the La Colonia Boxing Gym, Dr. Manuel Lopez Youth Center. And that's it, do you have any questions? Yes, and I think we do have public comment, correct? Uh, Madam City Clerk? Yes. All right, so go okay. ahead. So the first uh, speaker is uh, Manuel Herrera. You're calling him, correct? Right. There was no voice coming through the screen. Hello? Uh, Mr. Herrera, go ahead. Hi, thank you so much for taking my call. Um, so, Madam Chair, members of the committee, my name is Manuel Herrera, Manuel Herrera. And uh, first of all, I want to wish you all good health. And I want to thank you all for doing uh, what you're doing to keep our citizens safe and our city operating during this emergency crisis. I know it's not easy, uh, but you're all doing a great job, and I commend you for that. So thank you so much. Um, now, I am the former president of La Colonia Youth Boxing Association. It was a nonprofit organization that was created around 1990, and it was to help renovate the old converted firehouse that is now known as La Colonia Youth Boxing Club. So in front of you, you have a resolution to rename La Colonia Boxing Club. When I first proposed this, it was while Dr. Lopez was still alive, but was having serious health issues. I was hoping that this would be approved in time for Dr. Lopez to accept this honor in person. Unfortunately, that was not to be. Um, the good news is that he was aware of this, we made him aware of this, and he was extremely honored 
to have his name tied to La Colonia Boxing Club. When I first got involved and became the president of La Colonia Youth Boxing Association, um, I had no experience in how the city works. I had never done anything like this. So the first, first person I went to was Dr. Lopez. I didn't even know him at the time, and he was very instrumental in guiding me uh, and, and introducing me to the right people like Karen Burnham uh, and uh, Mr. Pinkard, and they were all instrumental in making this happen. And as you now know, La Colonia Boxing Club is world famous. I mean, literally, it's a gym that every boxing fan around the world is familiar with. So I thought it'd be an honor to not not rename the building, but rather add to the name. So it would be La Colonia Youth Boxing Gym, Dr. Manuel Lopez Youth Center. I think it would be an honor to do that. I hope for your support. I hope uh, you know you guys can agree with me that he deserves this. As you saw the presentation there, he he's uh, a very well well was a very well respected and loved uh, citizen of Oxnard and official. So again, I I hope I have your support in this, and um, and then hopefully we can move this on to uh, to the city council. So thank you so much for your time. Again, stay safe and keep up the good work. Uh, we're all proud of you and what you're doing during this crisis. Okay, so thank you very much and have a good evening. Thank you, Mr. Herrera. Um, the next speaker would be, uh, I see here, Irma Lopez. Can you hear me? Okay, good. Yes, we're down here now. That maybe the public can't hear through the live stream. Would somebody check that, please? Hello? Hello. Is this Mrs. Lopez? Yes, it is. All right. Well, you're on, so you have three minutes. Would you please go ahead? Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mayor Pro Tem, this is Irma Lopez, Dr. Lopez's wife, and First of all, I'd like to thank the commission right now and the city council members for their support and through this trying time that we passed with my husband, who, of course, we loved very much and as a mentor that gave me and our family a lot of comfort was everyone that was there for his services. That was, you know, that gave the family a lot of comfort seeing that the community was was supportive of him and the life that he had led. And I think this is a great honor. I want to thank Terrell uh, uh, Harris and the PAL program and that are a part of the um, Colonia Boxing Gym uh, and Manuel Herrera also for this great honor that they wanted to bestow on him. And uh, we really appreciate it. My husband was very thankful for that been involved with the Colonia Boxing Gym for many, many years, and almost since its inception. He was always a great boxing fan, and he felt that that was very good for the youth of our community to have an outlet um, sports-wise. So that is, again, we are appreciative of that, and I'm very appreciative uh, to Mayor Pro Tem Ramirez for all of her friendship to my husband, towards the end, he was one of the last people to call her that he wanted to talk with, giving to her advice on her campaign prior to his passing, not too far in front of it. And I want to thank her for being there with him and with us at the hospital at the time of his passing. So, uh, again, I want to thank all the citizens of Oxnard on behalf of, of myself and my children and our family. So thank you so much for, for this. Thank you, and I have... Okay. That's it. Thank you. Well, uh, all right. Thank you very much. So our next speaker is Marissa Lopez. And I believe she's at the same location as Mrs. Lopez. Correct? Hello? Hi. Uh, Ms. Uh, Marissa Lopez, go ahead. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. I... I just uh, wanted to follow up on what my mom said and just extend my my um, deepest thanks 
for, on, the, on behalf of my dad, I know it's something that he did know was something that the community was trying to do uh, before he passed, and it, it gave him great joy. I think boxing was something that um, has had a long history in Oxford um, from his youth, and he followed every every single um, every single boxer who ever came out of Oxford and actually across the country. Um, and I know that th- this is a, a great honor for him. So thank you uh, all for your efforts in this. Thank you very much. Um, so our next speaker I see is is it Tiffany Lopez? Yes, I'm dialing her now. All right, thank you. After Tiffany, I have no uh, further speakers. Is that correct? Correct. correct. Thank you. Hello. Hello, Tiffany Lopez. Go ahead. Oh, hi. I, is this, uh, I can't hear. Who, who am I speaking to? Uh, this is Carmen Ramirez. I'm chairing the committee. Oh. So please. Hi, hi, Carmen. Your comments, please. You're on. You're on the air. Oh my. Co- oh yes. Okay. Is this regarding the um, the boxing gym or the library or both? The boxing gym matter. The box. The boxing gym. Okay, perfect. Thank you uh, for having me speak. Uh, it's kind of a little bit of echo time, so if I, um, you can't hear me. Can you hear me clearly? Yes. Okay. Um, well, thank you for considering um, my father renaming that um, the boxing gym after my father. Um, as you know, he's, he's um, one of his main. Um, he loves is boxing, but rec- but but in Oxnard, recreation has been one of his big goals and um, having place, safe places for uh, children and teens to go. So that's always been, he's been working on that from the parks to the, the La Colina Youth Boxing Gym, the Boys and Girls Club Boxing Gym. Um, and so he's always been a really big proponent of recreation. So I think that would be a nice um, tribute to my father and I just hope that, you know, the, the council will consider uh, naming it. I don't think it's going to be, tech, it's, they're going to name it under, right? The name would be under? I'm not sure the technicality of it. Is that the, is that the consideration? We'll, we'll be discussing that in a little bit. Thank you. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I know I, that's what um, Terrell had told us that would be La Colonian and possibly with my dad's. Um, name under it, so that I was just wanting to speak in um, in support of that. I know that you know all the community knows how much the levy has for boxing and for the city and um, and for recreation in general and for at risk youth. So I think it would be a nice uh, tribute to my father. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, and um, and also I told Terrell that I'd be willing. I know these, that there is um, they're going to be starting a capital campaign. Uh, for the recre- for the boxing gym, so I'm definitely willing to help out, use my resources, and I know that we've kind of been a standstill with the pandemic, but um, once that that um, clears up, I'm definitely willing to help out as well. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, Madam. Thank Sa- you. Thank you, Miss Lopez. Uh, we have okay. Thank you. No, that's uh, that's the end of the speakers. Thank you very much. So now I'll go to my council colleagues here and ask if they have any questions or comments. Councilman Madrigal. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, no real questions. Um, if anyone has not been to the Colonial Boxing Gym, I suggest that they actually go for a look. I know it's open very, uh, very limited hours in the afternoon, evenings, um, but it's a great place, very well kept. I know the building is very old, but on the inside, you know, you see uh, blood, sweat, and tears that many uh, youth ha- uh, go through there. Um, they grow up a lot. Um, very good uh, leadership at the uh, Colonial Boxing Gym, and it's a staple for a lot of kids in the Colonial neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councilwoman Basua. Thank you. I have no 
questions um, in regards to this, and I'm actually very supportive of this action. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I, um, I totally support this, uh, but I want to uh, ask Mr. Harrison about the naming because in the proposal, it's uh, there's a reversal of what is anticipated. Can you talk about that? In other words, it's um, the proposal is, as it's stated on the agenda, renaming La Colonia Boxing Gym to Dr. Manuel Lopez La Colonia Boxing Gym. But it's my understanding that the phrase La Colonia Boxing Gym is world famous. And it might be more appropriate to say, to propose La Colonia Boxing Gym and Dr. Manuel Lopez Youth Center. Can you comment, Mr. Harrison? Yes, uh, Mayor, um, a uh, mayor pro tem uh, committee members, um, correct. Um, after uh, speaking to people, um, actually speaking to some of the Lopez family, that is the way um, Dr. Lopez would want it. And so we made that reversal. So that further um, puts the gym, the, the world class, the world renowned gym, um, out there in an intact, and then also includes uh, Dr. Lopez's contributions. So correct. Thank you very much. Well, I'll just add this, that um, we had uh, an individual in our community who served since 1978 on Oxnard City Council and became an elected mayor, the first Latino elected mayor in 1994, I believe, and um, had an impressive career of public service. He, uh, I do have a bit of a personal connection because he was my optometrist when I first came to this city in 1978. We had a long, uh, great relationship and um, it's hard to believe he's gone. So I, I totally support this proposal, but I also wanted to say I've sent a letter to Michelle uh, Asensión, our city clerk, uh, to follow the procedure to ask really also also in addition that our main public library be named after Dr. Lopez. Dr. Lopez, it's not on our agenda today, but I wanted to alert people that that was a request I was making um, because Dr. Lopez was very instrumental in getting our main library built and in raising funds for it. And he's very, he loved the library and what it did for our young people. So. Um, I will be asking that in a different time and place for that to also be considered. So, um, unless there's anything further, I'd like to see if we have a motion to approve this resolution as amended to be stated to rename the boxing gym to La Colonia Boxing Gym, Dr. Manuel Lopez Youth Center. Is there a motion? Motion. Second. Thank you. Thank you. So, Madam City Clerk, can you please take a roll? Thank you. Member Basua? Aye. Member Madrigal? Aye. Chair Ramirez? Yes. Motion and carries three to zero. Thank you. So this will be forwarded to the City Council uh, at, in a timely manner. Thank you, everybody. So we'll go on to our second item, which is a cultural and community services update on department response to COVID-19 and the recommendation is that the Community Services Committee receive a report on the Cultural and Community Services Department's response. So, um, Mr. Harrison, are you doing this? Yes, I am, Chair, uh, Chairperson. So, um, <laughs> bless you. Bless you. So, uh, good evening. Um, the purpose of this presentation is to let you all know what your cultural and community services department is doing in response to COVID-19. Normally, you think of us as doing recreation activities for youth all the way up to seniors, as well as operating uh, our libraries and um, our public arts programs. But on March 11th, um, we had to close our senior centers, our RSVP programs, um, our Oxnard Special Population Programs, as well as our boxing gyms. 
on March 13th, um, we had to close our libraries, all of our, uh, the rest of our gyms, um, our city core youth programs, our preschool classes, as well as our recreation um, classes and after school programs. Um, we know that the community relies on these programs as a whole and it brings um, and it enhances the quality li of life to all of our citizens. So the question was, was how we were going to move forward and still provide some services um, to our community. So first, I would like to bring our library manager, uh, Sophia Kimsey, to talk about the programs that they're doing uh, in, in our libraries. Welcome. Thank you. Okay. Good evening. Thank you, Terrell. Uh, good evening, Chair Ramirez and members of the committee. Uh, my name is Sophia Kimsey, and I am the library manager for the library system here in Oxnard. And I'd like to start by saying that the Oxnard Public Library is tied closely to the quality of life in our community. The library builds relationships and creates opportunities within the community and helps to grow our residents into a vibrant community, co vibrant community members. Libraries strengthen the community. The Oxnard Public Library was one of the first libraries in the area to react to the COVID-19 event, and the, star, the staff kicked into gear looking at how we could quickly and easily provide our free information and services to the community while they sheltered in place. You would be proud to know that the Oxnard Public Library staff has been providing similar services to what our patrons usually receive when coming into the library, but doing this from the safety of their home. During the crisis, the services the Oxnard Public Library provides are essential to our community. This first slide is our virtual story time, and the Oxnard Public Library is posting story times on our social media, Facebook and Instagram. The story times are interactive ways parents can keep their little ones encouraged to read. The books are sharing all, are, the books we are sharing have all received permission from publishers to present online and are available through our website to check out virtually. This week, we had a special April birthday story time for children. Over 135 community members were reached. That is way more than we would be able to fit into our main library event room. Virtual book discussion. This is um, an opportunity for children uh, about K through third grade to interact with one of our children's librarians and they have a book discussion. So she will pick a topic and they will discuss it. And we try to refer the students and the children to some of our resources on our website that they can check out with their library card. The Virtual Homework Center um, is um, our homework center which um, which has a staff usually in our main library and our South Oxnard branch. Our staff um, are still tutoring children K through 12 with any assignments, questions that they may have. Students can email us at library at oxnard.org or staff can take their phone calls directly and they will help tutor them over the phone. We have lots of online resources and um, that will help students and parents as well as teachers that are located on our website. Uh, book talks are um, similar to book discussions, but um, we've had a few book talks already. Um, we are using uh, our social media to publish these, and last week we posted a fiction book talk on several recently published mysteries, as well as separate posts on exercise and running while in isolation. So our books, our book discussions are for all ages, and uh, they whet the appetite of the listener to try out different formats and genres through our ebook content online. The digital library access, our 
website is very active. We're adding to our website content almost daily with updated information and new resources. We've been working with our statewide consortium regarding providing electronic resources to the Oxnard community at no charge during this time. Currently, we have added additional career exploration app apps. We have an Asian language periodical um, uh, electronic resource and statewide access to one of our ebook platforms, which provides an additional 70,000 ebook titles, which um, is in addition to our very large ebook collection already. The collection consists of popular fiction, nonfiction, genres including romance, mysteries, travel, crafts, cookbooks, and more. We have added a career app um, to our webpage through the end of June, and this has been provided free to us through our statewide consortium. The app will assist the community with career information, and as our community gets back to normal, um, the app will assist them to find the right career path as well as develop personal budgets. In addition, we're adding Asian language periodicals at no cost to the city over the next two months. The digital library of over 200 magazines offers such languages as Taiwanese, Korean, Chinese, and Japanese. In addition to the digital library access, I do want to mention that our social media is really on fire right now. The Oxnard Library staff has beefed up our social media presence and we're meeting our community where they are. Since librarians have been working from home, many of our Instagram posts have engaged close to 400 people each with such topics as our downloadable magazine collection, things to do with the family while at home, and children's resources available through our website. One of our patrons, Mr. Diaz, uh, called our reference phone line um, mm -hmm. to express how thankful he was that the library had a book budget that supplied online e-content so that he could quarantine safely but be occupied. Our e-content allows Mr. Diaz and others who have a library card to view movies, listen to music and books, and read comics and novels. There are also children's books and materials in English and Spanish. The COVID-19 event has brought to the forefront the ongoing demand for e-content. Additionally, I'd like to wrap up by saying that um, we don't want the community forget to forget that their library fines are currently being waived due to the COVID-19 event. We're asking patrons to keep their library items at home for now until this is over. We're also registering library patrons by phone. So if people don't have a library card, all they have to do is pick up the phone and call us and we will get them a card so that they can use resources uh, through our website. We're suspending the need for an ID at this time so that we can provide these services. We're also still offering our usual phone reference services. Librarians are remotely answering phones from home, so please call us. Our patrons that have called are very appreciative to hear a live person who can assist them quickly. A couple, a couple of great opportunities have availed themselves in the last day or so that I wanted to be sure to let you know about. Um, we are collaborating with Teen Health and Wellness to offer our Oxnard teens an opportunity to share their personal stories about COVID-19 for online publication. Teens can share their story through our social media by writing about their experiences during this uncertain time. If their story is accepted for publication, it will be published online at teenhealthandwellness.com. Teens will also receive a certificate and they can reach us at our phone number and we will give them more information. Lastly, um, I would like to say that we're launching one additional program because we just, we just want to do more for the community. And that is we have um, pulled together a list of all of our library patrons who are in the senior classification. And our library staff will be calling all 10,000 of them. And we will be doing a wellness check. We will be 
answering questions. We will be making sure they're getting adequate and um, up-to-date information if they need it. And we'll be informing them of library services that they can avail while they're sheltering in place and in isolation. So as you can see, there's a lot going on at the library as we serve a community who's trying to educate their children, stay busy while they're away from work, and obtain authoritative information. So now I'd like to introduce Renee Rakestra, the Recreation Community Services Manager. Before you do that, Ms. Kimsey, can I ask a question? Or sure. Questions for my colleagues? Before we, so we don't have to. Sure. Back up. Do, do uh, my my uh, committee members have uh, questions? Ms. Basua? No, I don't. Mr. Madrigal? No. Uh, I, well, uh, just a couple of questions. Um, the services are available in Spanish as well. Yes, they are. I w I'm just uh, so overwhelmed at how thoughtful this. Uh, propo program is and uh, so people do not have a library card can get at least a temporary one over the phone correct? that's correct yes we want everyone to avail themselves of the free services and we know so many people are isolated at home our our reading material music movies comic books, children's books, things in Spanish, English, Asian languages, they're all available for free. You don't have to leave the, the home to be entertained. So we want to make sure everyone has that opportunity with a library card. I'm sorry about that. My dog is not being... <laughs> it's not okay. He enjoys okay. the library too. Yeah. <laughs> and um, the, the information you gave about Teen <laughs> Hall... Teen Health, that would be uh, available on your on the website or on the Facebook page? Yes, and we'll be posting some information on our social media. And if anyone's interested in that, they can just pick up the phone and call us, and we'll give them information over the phone as well. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. So now, Ms. Rakestraw. Good evening, Mayor Pro Tem and committee members. So recreation also took a similar approach and, and really looked to see how we can bring the recreation programs into the homes of Oxnard residents. And so we um, have a mentoring program for youth ages 12 to 17 out of the Oxnard Police Activities League under our Youth uh, Directors Council. And they meet with our, the mentors once a week under normal circumstances. So now we're taking those meetings uh, to a virtual level and meeting with the youth between the youth and mentors uh, via Hangout and Zoom. We also uh, moved our recreation programs into um, what we're calling Oxnard Rec at Home. And so there's daily postings on all of our social media outlets of activities that can be done at home. And we have a weekly campaign. So if you notice on the slide um, that's being presented, this week's uh, activity is Chalk It Up. And so we're encouraging people to go out and uh, write encouraging messages, do activities using chalk, and uh, share it with us using the hashtag. And so every week, last week we had a virtual Easter egg hunt, and so every week we have a new uh, campaign. Also with our after school program staff, we're providing videos of activities. So it will be a familiar face that many of the children um, see in the after school programs uh, via these activities, activities that are being shared uh, on videos uh, on our social media. We also have put together a parks team in support of some of the amenity closures and then this past weekend, the park closures. So we have recreation staff who are visiting 53 parks Monday through Sunday um, and really trying to uh, encourage social distancing measures and remind our residents of any amenity closures that they might be um, 
participating in. Our special populations program also went virtual, and so they put together supply packets that the participants could come by and pick up, and uh, once a week, they'll be participating in virtual art classes. So they have all the supplies at home that they will need to participate and log in one day a week um, to our Oxnard Special Population social media and participate in a virtual art class. And then we move on to food. So the recreation team has really um, supported the food distribution efforts that are citywide. So first I'll speak on the school lunches. Uh, there's a few websites uh, for the Oxnard School District, Wainimi School District, El uh, Rio School District, and the Oxnard High School District. All four of those districts are providing lunch for um, children 1 to 18 Monday through Friday. Their schedules do get updated on a weekly basis, so I would encourage uh, the community to visit those websites directly for information. We also have food distributions uh, going on uh, for seniors. So what would normally be served at the Wilson and Palm Vista senior centers as a hot lunch Monday through Friday, we are now serving as a hot meal to go. So if anybody is interested, you can call 385-8029 to reserve your meal ahead of time, and Monday through Friday, you pick up that meal at 11.30 a.m. Those menus are also posted uh, prior to the week start um, on a, a monthly, a weekly menu. Our home delivered meals are also available for seniors and uh, you can get information in an application by calling the same number that I just shared, 385-8029. Then we have our pantries, senior kits, and pop-up sites in collaboration with FoodShare. Those are throughout the city uh, and more information on locations for the pantries, pop-up sites, or senior kits can be found at foodshare.com. Tomorrow, we are partnering with FoodShare to host a pop-up uh, location at College Park. Distribution of food will begin at 3 p.m. We are expecting quite a few individuals or quite a few vehicles to come through. It's no walk-up will be allowed. An individual who is interested in um, getting food needs to be in a vehicle in order to receive that food. And this, uh, this schedule also is updated on a weekly basis. And in regards to donations, if anyone is interested in donating, uh, you can go to the Food Share website and there's a donate button that you can get more information there. Any questions? Uh, Councilman Madrigal, do you have questions? Uh, actually, I just have a few comments uh, overall. Uh, thank you, thank you for everything. Uh, uh, that being done uh, by this department. I hear many, many positive things uh, from residents of the city concerning uh, the department and everything that, uh, that everyone's done over the last month. So uh, thank you. I know it's a very difficult time. And um, one, just one thing with, the, uh, with food share, you know, um, I know residents are grateful and it's a great time to build community and I understand um, the concept as to why only uh, people that come in vehicles are able to um, get food but at the same time uh, knowing uh, uh, some of the issues for example that some of the school districts have had where Councilman Madrigal, I think you've dropped off. Okay, uh, Oscar, you're back. Can you hear me? 
Did he click? Can you hear me? I Hello? can try to call him. Should I try calling him? In and out. Maybe that's a good idea. Okay. We'll hold on for a second here. It looks like he's on the line. Oscar, can you hear us? Okay, let me let me try to call him. He's Oh, hello, Oscar. Uh, yes, you were uh, in the loop. We we your comments uh, dropped when you said started to talk about um, the walk up situation. Yeah, um, back. I'm sorry. Um, having internet issues. Going back to our previous meeting earlier today, um, but um, yeah, the whole concept of the walk up issue is um, I understand from both sides. I know. Um, I know why um, walk-ups um, are not ex accepted, but at the same time, we are neglecting a large population that needs that help. You know, a lot of these people don't even have a financial means to purchase a vehicle. So I know that you know this food is essential for them, and you know we're we're in a way you know they they are not able to get uh, this food. So you know that's something that we have to take into account. That yes, you know. We are doing a great deed, but at the same time, you know, um, we are, you know, leaving some people out. Thank you for that. It's very Can important. I give, jump in on that? Council Member Madrigal, the pop-up location tomorrow, we're expecting about 2,500 vehicles, and so that's why it's been limited to walk-ups only. At the other pantry distribution sites, there have been accommodations that have been made for walk-ups. And so by going to foodshare.com, there's an opportunity to find a pantry location. Tomorrow's location is a very large uh, distribution that's going to occur, but there's many other distributions throughout the city uh, that uh, individuals can go to and access. Um, can you name at least one of those? So uh, we have distributions at, at some of our facilities to name would be uh, Pell, uh, out at Colonia, the multi-use center, to name a few, South Oxnard. Okay, oh, thank you. Yes. Thank you very much, uh, good points. Um, I should have asked uh, Madam City Clerk if we have any public comment on this item. No, we don't. Okay. So, uh, Councilwoman Basua. Thank you. Um, th thank you for your presentation. Um, it was very informative. I, I do have a question. Um, you talked about um, updates um, during the week. Is this up on our website where we can refer our residents to? I mean, this is all really good information. And I was just, you know, wondering if it's up on our website. Councilmember Basua, is it? specific to the food share or the entire presentation? Just the entire presentation. It was it, it was a lot of information with the library. Um, they're doing great things and the food sharing and just, you know, you guys are all doing a wonderful job. So I was just wondering if there's information on our website that we could direct people to. So we will be putting this exact presentation up. We did not post it prior to the agenda because we were trying to make sure we had the most up-to-date information, but we will post that. And then each of the divisions um, are updating websites as they have more material to go out as well as their social media sites with the various information. So I can have Terrell and Renee and Sophia speak to that of where people can find that data because they all have their own kind of Facebooks and social media. So I'm going to turn it back to Renee to give a little bit more specifics on that. Thank you. So as far as uh, 
recreation goes, we have a few social media handles that I'd encourage the community to follow. Oxnard Rec would be one. Oxnard Senior Services, uh, our Oxnard Pell, um, our Oxnard Sp Special Populations, and all of those are on the Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter platforms. And then I'll go ahead and let Sophia speak as far as the library goes. So the library's website is oxnard.org backslash library. And then our Instagram is Oxnard Library. And then on Facebook, you can just type in Oxnard Public Library. We also have a Twitter at Oxnard Public Library. Thank you very much. OK, so I have a couple of questions. I want to thank you, all of you, for your great uh, work and presentations. Uh, I want to know, um, it, it seems that uh, we're very much focused on, as we have to be, on electronic communication and um, assuming that folks have computers or at least an iPhone and internet, which we've seen in this meeting is not always totally reliable. Um, I, I'd just like to ask if there's any alternative for people who just have a phone. Um, and do we know, you know, I'm always concerned that we might, by necessity, uh, leave people out because they don't have the technology. Yes, more information as far as recreation uh, can be gained by calling 385-7995. Again, 385-7995. And I'll let Sophia speak here. Thank you. Yes, um, we're concerned about that too at the library. Um, we know that so many people come in to use the library just for computer resources. So our number is 385-7532. That's 385-7532. And anything we can do over the phone, we're happy to do it. Um, we can assist people with computer questions over the phone if they're having trouble with any of the websites. Um, if they go to some kind of content on our website, we can walk them through that as well. So we'll be happy to work with them over the phone as well. Thank you. Is that the end of the presentation or did, did we finish up? Yes, that was the end. Thank you very much. Uh, I have just a couple more questions here and um, about, we haven't closed our parks like some other cities. But our, our strategy is to let people use the parks, but not the equipment, not the, the benches, the playground equipment. Uh, and they have to socially distance. They have to be physically distant from each other, correct? Correct. And we do have staff, as uh, Renee mentioned earlier, um, that remind people at our 52 parks as well as all our, the golf course and, and the beaches to maintain social distance. And I, I'll let you know our citizens, uh, when staff is actually contacting them, I would say 99% of all people they contact say thank you, thank you for reminding me, and they either stop the activity that they're doing or they spread out away from each other. That's great. And I think that the, the word out there is that our county, at least, is doing pretty well in trying to flatten the curve. Of course, we cannot be complacent and, and let our guard down. And of course, my concern is always people who didn't, who didn't get the message or don't have access to information. And I want to recommend that we, uh, if we're not already doing it, that we try to get on um, some of our Spanish language radio stations and talk about some of these things. I know we do have people doing it from various departments. I hope that we have a uh, more coordinated approach. But I am, the one thing that really impressed me is 10,000 calls to our seniors by our library staff. That is heroic. I really appreciate that. Um, so I do hope that this information presented will be available so we can share it. And um, I just want to thank you so much. I know that every little bit helps uh, to keep, keep us safe and, and healthy. Uh, a community really, really needs this information. So 
unless there's anything further, I will uh, thank you all for your presentations. Thank you very much. And, and if I can add something, I would like to thank all of our staff for um, doing new things, working to serve the public, and, and kind of getting out of, the, out of the box because they know that, that the community really needs the, the resources right now. So I would like to thank all the staff. I, I join in that and thank all of the city staff for doing things that they probably never anticipated doing, but they've stepped up. And I wish I could be there in person. I think we all wish we could go back to the way it was, but this is important. We're doing our part. So um, I'll uh, thank you very much for this item. I think we've, we've closed that. And the next is items for future agendas. Do my colleagues have any recommendations? Mr. Madrigal? Not at this moment. Thank you. Ms. Basua? I also don't have anything at this moment. I don't either. And I want to thank you, uh, staff, for being there for us and to thank my colleagues for participating. We're still getting the hang of it, uh, but so far, so good. Thank you all. The meeting is adjourned. <laughs>